first round will go against Novak Djokovic. <laughs> Number 27, Malek Yaziri from Tunisia, wildcard. <laughs> yep, that is the face of a man that no is screwed. Today, let's take a look at what players in the tour actually think about Novak Djokovic. Either in post-match reactions where they describe what it's like to play against him, or just simply players giving their opinion on Djokovic and his legacy. But first, if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, make sure to do that. Over 90% of you guys who are watching this video are not subscribed, so make sure to hit that red button. That said, let's get right into the video. Matteo Berrettini is someone that knows very well what it is to face Djokovic. In 2021, he had to face Djokovic in three different Grand Slams, Roland Garros quarterfinals, the Wimbledon final, and again at the US Open quarterfinals. And after the US Open match, he gave a very good description of what it's like to play Novak Djokovic. Can you describe what it's like from a physical standpoint to play against a player? Like, well, there is no player like him, but to play against, so is to play against him, what he, what he draws out of you and whether, he, whether it's just wearing to play against him? Yeah, I mean, I never experienced... Uh... With him, I feel good by just that to keep up that level, uh, I need extra, I don't know, experience, I guess, or uh, maybe just to play better, you know. Uh, he, does it, he doesn't give me any free points. I have to earn every, every single point. It doesn't matter if I serve or if I return. Um, and so he makes me sweat in a, lo in, in a way that at the end you just, uh, I, I don't think I played worse than the first set. I just a uh, little bit, I guess a little bit more tired, but in a way that with other players, uh, I wouldn't feel it. With him, just uh, just one point percentage-wise, and the the game changed. And yeah, that's what I what I feel in the court. Nick Kyrgios is someone that was not very impressed after his two first meetings against Djokovic in 2017, but after the 2022 Wimbledon final, where he lost against Djokovic in four sets, the Australian praised Djokovic and talked very specifically about how composed of a player he is. He's just really composed. Um, you know, I felt like... It's weird, I felt like he didn't do anything amazing today. Um, you know, he returned obviously the way he returns. I feel like he's just a great returner, but... He's just so composed. That's what I was just thinking to myself, you know, in big moments. It just felt like he was never rattled. And I, f I feel like that's his greatest strength. He just never looks rattled. He just looks completely within himself the whole time. It didn't look like he was playing over aggressive, even though it felt like he was playing big. So hats off to him. He's uh... Of course, a player that knows very well what is playing against Djokovic is Roger Federer. In 2015, he gave a very good insight, comparing his rivalry with Nadal to his rivalry with Djokovic. Totally different players. Um, <laughs> Rafa has been tougher for me, uh, even though I guess uh, Novak's beaten me almost as many times now as well. Um, but Rafa for me, I guess, has been the ultimate challenge. Novak also, I mean... I don't know, I didn't have that problem early on. He just became a really, really good player and tough to beat. And now, especially in recent years, he's taking it to another level you know, of his own game. That's just make it harder for, for me to dominate him. But still, uh, you know, I'm winning my fair share of matches against him. And uh, I just, I really enjoy playing against Novak. He's a, he's a true test, you know. Also, after his last victory against Novak Djokovic at London 2019, he shared some few words that describe very well what Novak Djokovic is about. Novak has um, has done an unbelievable of a job in his career to find ways, you know, to either make you play bad or to just be just be better you on you on the day or squeeze a, another victory out like the way he did at, at Wimbledon. Um, so, one of the very few players that can say has a positive head-to-head -head against Djokovic is Andy Roddick with a five-to-four head-to-head. But the American knows what it feels like to be destroyed by Djokovic, and that happened in their last meeting. In this clip, Roddick gives a pretty good description of what he felt in that match. With kind of the news of the Olympics recently, but I remember uh, 2012 at the Olympics, I played Novak's second round. I was unseated, but had won uh, a couple weeks before and had uh, won two out of the last three tournaments I played in. So I was feeling great. I felt like Wimbledon was a place where I could still... Uh, you know, maybe catch lightning in a bottle, make a bit of a run. Uh, felt great in practice that week. 
went out second round. And Novak was someone uh, who I who I had had a decent record against to that point. Um, and he beat me like a drum. I was like a child on the court. And I didn't play that. I Like, I walked off the court. I lost two and two on grass, right? Served average. And that's, you know, it's not a good, good thing for me to serve average against Novak. But uh, walked off the court and then go, you know, I'm going to go out tomorrow and feel like I'm playing well. He just beat me like a drum. And that was one of the first times. The US Open was a couple months later, obviously. But that was one of the first times where I'm going... This game is getting a little bit different than what I've been used to. These guys are playing, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of from another planet right now. And that one, uh, that one kind of hit home for me. Um, the way he was playing in that moment was was eye opening. But the player that knows the best what it's like to play Djokovic is Rafael Nadal. And here are some very good clips of him talking about Djokovic. Y si podías decir un elemento de su juego que que te molesta. ¿Cuál sería? Me molesta la buena pieza. <laughs> Así de claro. Rafa, you like challenges, you said it many times. Are you glad that no back exists? No. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like challenges, but I'm not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> It depends. Huh? There's different uh, different ways. Huh? Because if you take Djokovic, I don't think he's on the super sensitive side. Probably. He's more maybe a machine. <laughs> uh, I mean, in terms of mentality. But I am sure that he has his doubts too. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, no. Of course. But ten but tendency, you would say, is a little bit on the other side. Uh, you have different characters. Now. Both things yeah, yeah. are good, yeah. uh, and you need to find your way. Uh, that's that's my that's my point of view. There is yeah. no only one way to have success or to, to, to accomplish your dreams. No? Yeah. There's different ways and you need to find your personal way. Yeah. And to finish the video, let's see some shorter clips of players in the tour that see Novak Djokovic as the greatest tennis player of all time. If you look at the stats, if you look at, uh, you know, a pure game of tennis, he's the greatest of all time and nobody comes, you know, nobody is there with him because most weeks world number one, most Masters 1000 titles, most likely going to be most Grand Slams at the end of the day. And he has the chance of winning all four in the same year. How do you, how do you compete with that? As you said, what you accomplished uh, this year and throughout your career, um, I never said this to anybody, but I'll say it right now. For me, you are the greatest uh, tennis player in the history. So that's it for today's video. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If that's the case, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel to enjoy more great tennis videos like this one, and I hope to see you guys in my next video. Peace!